copyright parallel importing of films amendment bill. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Honourable Craig Foss. Mr. Chairman, I seek leave for there to be a single debate on all clauses of the copyright parallel importing of films amendment bill, with each question to be put separately at the conclusion of the debate. Leave is sought for that purpose, and this is at clauses uh, one to four. Uh, be taken as one question. Leave is sought for that purpose. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Um, someone's, um, oh, the question is then, the clause is one to four, stand part. Jacinda Ardern. Mr Chair, I'll take then the opportunity to be the first member to rise and speak on the committee stages um, of this uh, bill. And I think the, I think the Minister for, um, uh, through this process, um, talking openly with various um, parties over how to proceed with um, this issue. This is one of those issues that I think that um, parliamentary colleagues can at least um, discuss and debate openly and frankly, and I know that happened at the uh, Select Committee during the Select Committee process and indeed beforehand. And I do want to put on, um, uh, put on the record, Mr Chair, that this is an issue uh, the issue, the general issue of parallel importing that did meet with um, two differing perspectives within our caucus. And it was very much a line call for the Labour Party as to which way we would go. There are indeed arguments on both sides as to whether or not the time has come immediately um, at the point of expiration currently for this existing law um, in mid-October to just simply let it lapse and expire or whether or not we allow a, a small and final extension to the existing law. And what I would, as I have said before in this debate, where we have come to as a, a party is to opt for a time-limited compromise. Uh, so that is to say we satisfy to a certain degree the view that it must go by re-stipulating and restating clearly today uh, the extension that is being applied here and now will lapse uh, in a few years' time and it will lapse for good. I think that that's something that even those members who are not voting for the bill today, they're indicating that they want to see it go, but I've even heard from members from the opposite side of the House they agree this is the final chance. Now, the reason I think we need to state that very, very clearly is because the copyright parallel importing of films Amendment Bill is um, uh, an amendment to the Copyright Act 1994, which bans the commercial parallel invitation of film for nine months from the date the film was first released. I believe there have been three extensions, Minister, two extensions. So this is the third extension um, to, um, uh, to that bill. So there have been multiple chances before. Uh, and the reason we want to be very clear that this is the last chance is I know that some parties have based their opposition on the fact that they're worried there'll be another extension. We will not support another extension under no circumstances. We've made that extremely clear now. For us, this is the line in the sand for the industry that the time is up. So why did we fall on the other side of giving, allowing this one last final extension? Well, we have put some caveats around it, Mr Chair. Um, and, of course, those are set out in this, what is a very short bill. Um, those are set out by the fact that uh, in the last part of the bill, it's under Clause 4, part, uh, Section 2, it states that this bill will essentially expire on the 31st of October 2016. There was an opportunity for a longer extension than that. We've said no. We think that we can make it shorter, and that's the time that we've gone for. The second... Um, indication is this, that this is the last chance is the fact that under clause 4 again a it says uh, it sets out that uh, section 35 is amended brackets infringement by importation and those um, infringements apply to a cop uh, imports a copy of the film into New Zealand within five months of the date that the film was first made available to the public um, so Instead, previously, it was a nine-month window. It's changed now to a five-month window. That, again, indicates this is an incremental withdrawal of the parallel um, importing of uh, films ban that currently exists in New Zealand. Mr Chair, I want to talk um, briefly to the rationale, though, behind uh, that, um, 
uh, that banned a ban existing in the first place. We've heard some of the arguments already. There are 120 cinemas in New Zealand currently. Now, in people's minds, they might immediately resort to thinking about, um, you know, the cinemas in the big cities, multi-screen cinemas, the ones that probably look like they could sustain themselves quite readily if you removed any importation um, ban that exists. There are, of course, another set of cinemas that exist in New Zealand, smaller provincial cinemas, um, those who, for instance, may not be um, the uh, cinemas who have converted to digital exhibition. We know that only at this stage about 57% have. Um, those that are quite reliant, for instance, on um, the, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Jim, uh, the uh, revenue that they take in around family films at school holidays in particular, and of course those who might specialise in providing uh, smaller fringe films, art house films and, and so on. Those are the ones who certainly are going to need to adapt to a removal of um, an importation window. And it's to those cinemas that we send the message that there is now this small amount of time left before that opportunity will no longer exist for them. Now, some might argue that there are other industries that have had to adapt to the changing, uh, the changing world. The music industry is a prime example of where they've had to uh, adapt quickly to the fact that citizens and consumers now are accessing products in a much faster digital online uh, accessibility has changed the way that we consume those products and they have had to adapt to that rapidly. It's about giving consumers choice and accessibility. This industry has not done that as rapidly. Uh, and of course it is with some disappointment that that is the case, but this is that one last chance that as I mentioned for them to do so. And I would encourage them not to use the October 2016 as a end point targets, but rather an indication that they should move as rapidly, as quickly for the sake of consumers. Uh, it's interesting in the regulatory impact assessment, it does make some points around the factors that impact on the timing of release of films in New Zealand. I just want to share this for the House to just give a little indication of to why the this window is often used in the way it is and, and why it's important to this, um, those who work in the exhibition, cinema exhibition space. First is to say that um, when something uh, does go to cinema, if it has been released, it doesn't stop a consumer from accessing, purchasing that DVD um, online from overseas. That is not prohibited by this, um, by this bill. So, um, this argument that it's only through illegal means that you could access it online if it's being released is not a fair comment to make. They, you can um, do that online. An argument could be made that that disadvantages your domestic providers. That's a, that is, however, a fair argument to make, but it doesn't stop a consumer from being able to access it entirely. What are the factors that influence the timing of a release? Seasonal factors. So family films that are based around school holidays. We've already talked a little bit about how that then impacts on some cinemas. Competition with other films, screen avail availability. Some cinemas simply won't be able to display a film immediately on release because of that um, screen availability, availability of advertising, and a profitability assessment. Um, so for some films, distributors will decide on whether they're going to bring it to New Zealand based on profitability. So it's not an automatic assumption that we will um, indeed um, get everything. So these are all the things that impact on whether or not something's even released in that way. And there has been some concern of whether or not parallel import ban being lifted would um, stop New Zealand receiving as many films. And particularly, I think that can be an argument that has been made around some of those foreign and art house films as well. You know, on balance though, that is something that we are willing to sacrifice um, by the time that this uh, this window lapses on behalf of the consumer. So you can see that this was a finely balanced decision for us. And it is absolutely, as I have said, fair to say that there are caucus colleagues who probably would have fallen, uh, would have aligned themselves more with the other side of the argument. And that is why, again, I call this a time-limited compromise. 
a time-limited compromise because at the end of the day, well, what well, probably all members of this House agree is that the industry does need to move, it does need to change, it does need to modify, and it needs to do all of those things on behalf of the consumers that it serves. Uh, but in the meantime, we ask the industry to move as quickly as it can, uh, to find ways to innovate, and I don't think that this window removes the incentive to innovate. In fact, I think it gives them uh, it gives them the flag they need to do it quickly and to try and salvage as many jobs as possible. And we do know from the PwC report that was commissioned on this, we would have been looking at potentially immediate job losses over the 100 mark for some of those smaller um, provincial uh, um, providers, that that is, would have been the immediate consequence. So now that we're raising the, the flag for those providers, we're asking them to try and find a way to provide for consumers, but also to try and uh, save those jobs at the same time, and that's <coughs> therefore why we've come on this side of the argument, Mr Chair. Call Gareth Hughes. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Kia ora, namihinui kia koutou. Kia ora, rise to speak on the copyright parallel importing of films, Amendment Bill